Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the D Rich Show, where we talk anything and everything crypto. Now, here's your host, D Rich. Hey everybody, welcome to the D Rich Show. This is D Rich. Today is January 14th, 2021. Welcome to the show, everyone. Just want to go ahead and welcome my subscribers, the audience who is tuning in for the first time. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, just go ahead and make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and the no notification bell. And if it's something that you enjoy listening uh, to, and if you think someone else would like to listen to me, go ahead and hit that uh, share and retweet button, whatever you do. Um, on your favorite social media platform, whether it be Instagram, YouTube, um, you know, those things. Go ahead and give me a, uh, a share, please. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get into the uh, coin market cap, which is the people's economy. Over here, we're going to look at Bitcoin, which is still um, number one, trading at $39,471, up 13% in the last uh, 24 hours. Still dominating um, at 69.1%. Okay, we got an increase of 9.6% uh, increase um, over the last day as we've seen the market turn uh, green. Ethereum is up to $1,219. Tether is at uh, number three still. And guys, when I, you know, talk about Tether, I don't mean to bring it up um, on purpose, but it would just give you an idea that you can still use, use Tether um, as a means to um, trade in and out of your favorite favorite cryptos where you don't have to um, use like Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, or XRP to get the assets that you want. Speaking of XRP, XRP is at 29 cents, almost 30 cents. It did pop up to 30 cents. So um, go ahead and, uh, you know, keep an eye on that um, as well as Polkadot kind of surprised me at number five. You know, I didn't think that think nothing of polka dot at first but you know it's, it's starting to you know make me look at it a little bit differently now that i sat twelve dollars and sixty cents over uh twenty one percent almost twenty two percent over the last twenty four hours so you know what i have to do is my own due diligence and get rid of my bias against some of these other cryptos um not that i think that they would fail it's just that i might have not looked at them you know precisely or with you know um, detail but anyway um, polka dot might just be something that I go ahead and put into my portfolio um, this weekend um, hopefully it'll cool off just a little bit maybe go back under 10 bucks so then I could go ahead and start a, you know my cost average at that point but anyway moving for, forward with Litecoin is at $153.40 Bitcoin cash look at that thing uh, number seven, five hundred and twenty-eight bucks, and uh, Cardano um, at eight thirty-one cents, and Chainlink sixteen dollars and ninety-six cents, and XLM Stellar uh, rounding out the top ten at thirty cents. I won't go any further than that. Besides, you know the guy that's at number eleven trying to fight to get back into the top ten, uh, BNB, which is the Binance coin, forty-one dollars and forty cents. Anyway, guys, if you guys are looking at the market. You know, it looks pretty green, um, it looks a little flush. You know, if you are into altcoins, go ahead and suck them, soak them up um, and, and get them in your portfolio, whether you trade into them, trade out of them, you know, to get gains and things like that to, you know, build your portfolio on some of the other stuff that you want. I'm not opposed to um, anyone taking profits off the table to um, accumulate and acquire. Or just stand on the sideline waiting for another buying opportunity. So uh, don't be opposed to um, taking them profits because I know that when you put more money in, uh, it goes up and it goes down. It's the same amount of money uh, you're losing. So if you are heavy handed like I am, you know, it sucks to not take profits. So I encourage it. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and look at the regular market here on Communist News Network. Um, you know, the Dow Jones, 31116 dollars as we speak. The NASDAQ is at $13,166 and the S&P um, is at 
So guys, we're looking at the all-time highs over here in the stock market, even in a um, pandemic. Uh, you can't make this crap up. Um, but again, when you have um, negative interest rates, you know, um, you know, this is what's going to happen. Uh, then the central banks can't uh, manipulate the money uh, that way. So, you know, anyway, um, you got uh, some uh, things here that we can look at, you know, what's green, what's what's not. Um, then we're going to go ahead and look into the um, the gold market. If you guys are into gold and silver, precious metals like I am, I use this exchange at Max American Precious Metals Exchange to um, get me some of these American silver eagles that you see and some of these silver bars which in my opinion is way undervalued um, in the future I would assume that your um, silver um, will be about you know four hundred dollars anywhere between four hundred five hundred dollars an ounce um, if not more so you know you don't quote me on that that's just my speculation um, when we go back to a, you know a precious metal standard of some sort but anyway gold is uh, trading at uh, eighteen hundred and fifty eight dollars and fifty cents when I say trading I don't mean it in a literal sense of trading um, it is um, a spot price at that point okay so it's down six dollars and forty cents silver good buying opportunity right there whether you see that green right there or not um, is twenty five dollars and seventy nine cents spot price platinum um, eleven hundred twenty two dollars and palladium which we spoke on yesterday I believe yesterday it was, um, we spoke on palladium, $2,400, $25.50, uh, excuse me for um, butchering that. But anyway, guys, if you guys are into precious metals, things like that, you got uh, your silver. Um, I just want to point out some stuff right here. Um, go on and get you some of that junk silver. And if you don't know what junk silver it is, um, that means you are looking at like coins, that are 90% silver and we talked about this um, yesterday as well um, from the, the times um, that you um, they have stopped making it with real precious metals like silver copper things like that so um, go on there and get you some stack up on that stuff I don't know if it's going to be used for barding at one time or another I don't know um, I like the mercury dimes um, I also like the um, the the JFKs, the half dollars, those are those are some I like, and then these uh, rosies that I like as well. So I add those um, to my um, portfolio. Well, it's not a portfolio, but it's you know my side thing um, that I do. Um, <clears throat> so if you guys are into these things, um, these are good um, store of value, in my opinion, because this is uh, God's money, whether you believe it or not. You know the Bible speaks of it um, over and over again. Anyway, um, what I wanted to talk to you guys about on the day um, video is uh, your hardware wallets, your safety, your security. Uh, when it comes to your crypto assets, making sure that you get them off the exchange. Um, I received an email where there's um, been multiple phishing attempts um, or um, data being um, hacked into. So Ledger right now is kind of skeptical to me but at the same time it's been the most secure wallet that i've used and um you know i'm not going to tell you not to buy a ledger because it's you know it's easy um it's efficient um i've never really had any problems with it besides the phishing attacks and guys if you guys are um holding a ledger with your device i mean on your you got crypto on your device um the phishing campaign that they got going on is um, they'll send you a little piece of crypto and you'll, you know, don't click on those links. They'll send you like a penny, a couple pennies, 12 pennies, whatever. It's nothing to them just to try to see if you download that, you know, that link where it will give you, um, you know, a virus of some sort and they can hack into your stuff. So if you are in there, you know, you get the X or the S I use the, um, nano S and I also use it on my phone <clears throat> when I need to. And you can still use that on your phone. You don't need the Wi-Fi one with the Ledger Nano X. Um, if you're into the Elipal, oh, by the way, before I go for it, um, get you a Ledger on Ledger.com. You know, right now I don't have, you know, a code where you can get, you know, a discount or whatnot. But I will be working on that and putting that in the description as well. Um, I don't use the Elipal. 
Um, but I have heard um, a bunch of good things um, about the Ellie Pal. Um, <clears throat> so if you guys want a different wallet, go ahead and do some research about it. I would like to hear about it. If you want to make a comment in the description of the video, I'm all open for new suggestions and ideas to help improve my safety and security um, when it comes to my cold wallet and becoming my own bank. Um, so being your own bank is, you know, probably the most important thing um, that you are going to um, come across um, probably in your lifetime because it requires you to do your own research. It requires you to do um, your active um, diligent due diligence when it comes to making sure you understand how to move in and out of, you know, exchanges to your wallet, to your wallet, to the exchange, things like that. So this is important that you become your own bank. In other words, being in control of your own assets. <laughs> so do yourself a favor, get you one of these things, um, whether it be that, you know, the ledger, the Elipal or the treasure. I do have a treasure. Um, I haven't updated it or even put it in use is brand new still in the package um in fact um i'll give you a quick story about this uh this trezor so you know i'll go to um you know a swap meet and uh you know the lady had a bunch of stuff you know on the table you know electronic wise and things like that and she had the trezor in like this box before she you know she unloaded it and i picked it up and i said hey i'll give you you know 25 bucks for this or whatever and she asked me straight out what is this and i was like okay she doesn't really know and i said it's kind of like you know like a like a hard drive where you could put data on it or whatnot and she commenced to tell me i'll you know i could pay for it for 10 bucks well i'll give you 10 bucks for it i offered you 25 all right i'm gonna take it for 10 so i got me a treasure at the swap meet for 10 bucks and it's still in there it's brand new not even open um or anything um, but when you know what you're looking for when you're out like me um shopping you know you got to find those discounts so um uh, maybe one day i'll get it updated and uploaded and see what we got um with this but you know that's just another one you could go to treasure.io for that and then you could go to ellipal.com as well as ledger.com and moving forward um, with the video, Finstan extends comment period for rule aimed at closing anti-money laundering regulatory gaps for certain convertible virtual currencies and digital asset transactions. So guys, I'll go ahead and read this. The Financial Crimes Enforcement Network announced today it is reopening the comment period for its recent proposal rulemaking regarding certain transactions involving convertible virtual currencies or digital assets with the legal tender status under the notice of proposal rulemaking banks and money services businesses would be required to submit reports keep records and verify the identity of customers in relation to transactions above certain thresholds involving cvc ltda wallets not hosted by a financial institution hosted wallets means that you have a ledger some other co wallet, um, LA Pal or Trezor or whatnot. So, this is what they're talking about. Um, hosted by a financial institution, um, RCVC LTA wallets hosted by a financial institution in certain jurisdiction identified by FinCEN. Today's notice identifies additional statutory authority for proposed rule under the Anti Money Laundering Act of 2020. And it also provides additional information regarding the reporting form and reopens the comment period for the proposal. So I'm not sure if you guys have been following along, um, but they <clears throat> wanted to make rules and regulations about cell phone uh, crypto wallets. And um, it would have, you know, put, you know, a hamper on, you know, or a kibosh on some of the things that, you know, we as individuals who are in the crypto market, you know, want their privacy, want their uh, decentralization uh, when it comes to you know having your assets off the exchange because you know um, if it's on the exchange it's not your crypto and it's not your keys excuse me once you remove it and then it's in your hands it's in your custody you take control over it you 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 get to do what you please with it 
And this is why I like crypto so much is because I have control over my assets that I purchased with my funds. And you know what? If I lose, I lose. If I don't, then I still have them stored in a safe place. But anyway, moving forward, um, specifically, FinCEN is providing an additional 15 days for comments on the proposed reporting requirements regarding information on CVC and or LTDA transactions greater than 10,000 or aggregating to greater than 10,000 that involve unhosted wallets or wallets hosted in jurisdiction identified as FinCEN. Okay, um, I'll wrap it up by saying FinCEN appreciates the robust responses already provided by commenters and has reviewed more than 7,500 comments submitted by submitted during the NPR, excuse me, NPRM's original comment period. FinCEN looks forward to reviewing any additional information submitted during the extended comment period and to continue its active engagement with the cryptocurrency industry to ensure innovation with integrity that appropriately addresses anti-money laundering and national security risk. <clears throat> My question is, how do you have KYC or AML with the original Bitcoin holders or hodlers? It's a good question because at the end of the day, you know, they use this money to benefit themselves to boost up their sales and then at the same time they get to um you know get the most capital out of it and this is why i don't like bitcoin um because you know you have you know people who have bitcoin that came into um, cryptocurrency early or got involved with bitcoin early um <clears throat> and there's been no regulations in regards to um that you know, when they accumulated these Bitcoin, then there was no KYC, there was no AML. And we know that Bitcoin has been used for a whole bunch of nefarious activity um, up into including money laundering um, and things like that. And I think that we're going to find out that Bitcoin has probably been used for a whole lot more. Again, I will always state that I want Bitcoin to be successful. I have nothing against people who hold Bitcoin um, because at the end of the day, it's still... Um, a part of the uh, coin market cap and it's also you know the number one cryptocurrency um, that we have available to purchase now again I'll stay away from it um, because I have you know my reservations um, in regards to it there's other cryptocurrencies where you can uh, gain more with less instead of the, the other way around and finally, guys, in the show, um, what I wanted to bring out is this article about the ICE-9. Um, Jim Rickards reveals the elite's master plan and three ways to protect yourself. <clears throat> ICE-9 is a polymorph of water of the water molecule, which differs from HGO in two different ways. First, it has a melting point of 114.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Second, when ice nine comes into contact with water molecules, it trans transforms them into ice nine. This is not what we're getting at. Ice nine is this down here. It looks like this in theory when it comes to what I just read. Okay. Um, ice nine is a fine way to describe the power elite response to the next financial crisis. Instead of reliquifying the world, the elites will freeze it. This is, again, why we take our stuff off of the exchanges, because if you have money in the bank, you are at their disposal, you are at their mercy, and they can really do whatever they want because they've shown you over and over and over again. They'll take advantage of you. They'll charge you unnecessary fees, overdraft fees, things like that. And this is why I'm starting to see that banks are now offering uh, like, you know, say for instance, if you go on a, you buy certain stuff, they'll give you, you know, stuff back. You know, if they're going to give you stuff like that, take it, take it all. It's kind of like, you know, power piggy or, you know, you get, um, interest on your, you know, crypto investments, certain assets, things like that. If they're going to give you stuff for free and you hold those assets, you better believe you better be signing up for them 
making sure your money is coming back to you like every day every other two days on my ledger i have you know some crypto assets that get you know paid out to which is like tezos and things like that they give me 20 30 cents almost every other day consistently and if i hold that there i don't need to do anything but allow that money to collect and stack up anyway elites ricker warns are preparing for a financial ice nine with no vaccine they will quarantine your money by locking it inside the financial system until the contagion subsides this means closing down the banks exchanges and money market funds shutting down atms and ordering asset managers not to sell securities okay so please for your sake heed these words get some money out of the central banking control we'll show you three instantly actionable and simple ways to do so on this episode not my episode but this episode of this article and things like that so again um, i'll leave all of this in the description if you um are a jim rickers fan like i am i read a lot of this stuff i have multiple books by him um things like that um it's very informational i'll leave you know this in the description go ahead and read it i'm not going to get too far into it but you guys as um, my listeners you guys get the idea banks have failed they failed us tremendously so when you start seeing different banks disappear um it's because they were caught doing bad stuff and probably they don't have a balance sheet of gold to sustain uh their their losses to cover their losses they don't have that buffer that we talked about when it comes to um, a gold standard um, at a set price so that's what you need to do is start preparing to invest in gold and silver okay you don't have to go all in at one time don't um don't go in to a point where you're not paying your bills you're not paying um your things that are necessities um, if you have, you know, loose change, loose money that you can afford uh, to purchase these things, remember, gold, silver, all those precious metals, they're going to be a store of value. The money never n will go um, sideways. It will never disappear. You'll always have something. When it comes to cryptocurrency um, and digital assets, if you put money in, always put money in that you're willing to lose. And the only reason why I say that is because you got to have a different mindset uh, when it comes to um, investing because it's a roller coaster ride. You will lose sleep. You will be sick. You'll have stomach pains. You'll be worried. You'll be concerned. But I don't want you to be on those things because you have to know that you've done a lot of research. You've done a lot of reading, um, a lot of educating yourself getting a lot of different feedback and information from others as well and having an open mind um, that there's going to be lo losses and there's going to be wins. Hopefully you win more than you lose. Um, but at the end of the day, it is um, imperative that I've mentioned some of these things so you're aware of what you might need to do in order to you know benefit yourself um, outside of you know the banks and things like that because you want to have control and if you want control these are some ways or simple ways to gain control since i've been doing this i've been able to snatch my freedom away from them when i use my bank i only use my bank for certain purposes and certain purposes only i don't need any money in a bank i'm a cash guy if cash goes to trash then I'm a cryptocurrency type of guy and I know how to navigate through the market. It has to be more um, things that need to occur for the market to be fluid and for everybody to get into the market. But again, we're early and uh, you could get you get to cherry pick. Some of these ones that are two cents, three cents, not even a penny. I mean, load up on that junk. Because at the end of the day, even if you think it's a shit coin or a trash coin, whatever you want to call it. Hey, listen, I love money. I like money. And I know that as a human being, we have something in common. There's a couple things that we have in common as, as human beings. You know what? You don't mess with the kids. And you know what? Everybody wants to have a living. Everybody wants to have money to take care of for, um, their basic needs 
and beyond. So we have those things in common. So um, take control of your situation. And if it means stop buying Starbucks, stop buying stupid shoes that you can't even go outside to use right now because we're on some sort of simulated lockdown, depending on where you are. If you are friends of mine, like, you know, we got in Florida, they're up and going. You know what I mean? I heard today that they don't even bother them about wearing masks. They get to go to the gym and they get to see people in the gym without masks. But if you want to wear a mask, great. If not, okay, we should be able to say, like they said for a long time, my body, my choice. But anyway, that's not here nor there. Uh, Again, do your due diligence and um, start um, taking control of your situation. Stop going to these places that is unnecessary. Because I, I do it too. I foolishly spend money out of nowhere for nothing. And now if I have put that money to cryptocurrency or something else, then I can st- sit there and I can store that value and then come back. Hopefully it didn't go down too much. And if it did, then I'm going to dollar cost average. All right. Always remember, I don't know if anything is going to occur when it comes to glitches, blackouts, um, or you know, information um, is going to be shut down your Wi-Fi, things like that, where you can't get to it. But there is going to be a um, emergency alert system um, in place just in case those things happen. We don't know what might happen, um, but it's always good for me to tell you to prepare with batteries, water, rice and beans, non-perishable items, flashlights, um, candles, you know, a generator. So if you do have a refrigerator, your food doesn't go bad. Um, things like that. Those are some good things that you should put on your list and, you know, one by one, step by step, you know, knock them down and get them off your list. That's the only thing I can encourage you to do. Remember, um, this is not financial advice and I am not a financial advisor. Okay. Anyway, guys, um, that's pretty much my time for today. Um, I'll hit you guys with another video and, um, tomorrow, um, Friday, which is a uh, happy Friday, hopefully. All right. You know, um, I just want everybody to remain positive, remain upbeat um, and encouraged. And if that means I got to tell you that and I give you a little spark, um, that's what I'm hoping for. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you for God, guys for tuning in. Um, have a wonderful day. Do some good things. Always fun and exciting. You know, I was able to go out and exercise today for the first time um, in a couple weeks um, because of my schedule. So, you know, I, I need those things. You need those things that might help you improve your your um, exercise and your breathing your whatever. Um, it's always important to get that. Always um, remember those things. Exercise, exercise, exercise. If you don't exercise, at least try to stretch your body out so that your body is loose um, and things like that. Remember, you guys can also follow me on Twitter at DRidge5531. I'll be again setting up that gab.com. I'm already over there, but the server is a little bit slow because of um, heavy traffic, um, BitChute um, as well, and um, some other platforms that I'll be um, also on. If you like listening to just audio, you can find me on Spotify, um, Anchor.fm, Google Podcasts, iTunes, um, those type of listening um, platforms. Um, remember, it's always going to be the D Rich Show. Always the D Rich Show. We're not going to never um, navigate from that. Now, there might be additional um, things under the umbrella from the D Rich Show because there's a lot of things that I have in mind that I want to do that will follow fall under that umbrella. And you know, you guys need to stay tuned um, because at the end of the day, we're going to build and we're going to build this thing on up. And and your involvement is imperative and um we're going to be doing a lot of um involvement with you know my community or my subscribers so um stay tuned keep tuning in you know again hit the subscribe button hit the like button make sure you hit that notification bell because you know what i might drop you a video out of nowhere because you know i always see things and if i see things and they're not the truth um then you know um i gotta point it out all right so anyway God bless, excuse me, let me get this straight. How did I glitch that up? God bless, take care, and guys always remember to treat everyone with class, dignity, and respect. Bye-bye.